Hello everybody and welcome back to another not applicable Formula 1 video. I hope that you're well. I hope you're enjoying the build up to 2022. We've seen the Haas car now and we're moving forward over the next couple of weeks to see even more of those 2022 Formula 1 cars. But before we delve right into 2022, I want to talk about Daniel Ricciardo because it wasn't a vintage year from the Australian driver last year. He really did struggle in that new McLaren team and I personally am a little bit skeptical about what we can expect from him moving into 2022. So what I thought I'd do is team up with Cars with Connor this week and talk about Daniel Ricciardo's move from Renault to McLaren, talk about his year last year in that McLaren car, and then what we can expect from him in the future, whether he'll be at McLaren for the long haul or if we'll see him move somewhere else again. So this is what happened when I talked with Cars with Connor. Obviously, Daniel Ricciardo hasn't been the best of 2021s for him. But let me first take you back a couple of years and his move from what was Renault at the time to McLaren. What were your first sort of thoughts on that? Because I think most people were a bit surprised by the move. Well, I think uh, especially Cyril was very, very hurt by his move because obviously I think he obviously thought Daniel and him would have a have a long relationship together at Renault and maybe create them into a championship winning team. But now I think when he moved to McLaren, I'm like, they, they've just come third in the championship. They're, they're on the up. And maybe maybe this is his time to finally win that the world championship he wants. Yeah, that is a fair point. I hadn't really thought about the fact that they just come third in the, in the Drivers' Championship. But at the same time, it was a tricky move for him to make. And it seemed like a very strange time to make the move, especially because it was one year before we've got these new regulations. So it seems strange to me that he wanted to get himself into a new team, new car, for it to then all change anyway in a year's time. Well, I guess maybe it's kind of a kind of a good thing he did move then because I feel like maybe Bottas and Joe in the Alfa Romeo might struggle as they're all whole new team, whole new uh, regulations. It might be quite hard to adapt. I kind of think the move to McLaren was a little bit of a mistake from him. I know that McLaren seemed like a step up, but if he'd have stayed in that Alpine team, you know, we've seen with Fernando Alonso now being able to get so much out of that car. We've seen Ocon win races in that Alpine. If he'd have been more comfortable in that Alpine car, do you think he would have done better in the Alpine, even though it was slower, compared to the McLaren this year? Well, I think it's all about confidence, because obviously he had already had that two years in the, in the Renault, so he would have built up the confidence and know everyone around him and know the car. So yeah, I think he could have done very, very well in the Alpine. But in my opinion, a McLaren is just on another level compared to an Alpine. It's sort of the top four. Then you have the midfield of Alpine, Aston Martin, etc. So I really think he would have done he would have done way better in a McLaren rather than an Alpine. Okay, okay. I don't know if I agree with that. I think just because the Alpine car slowly like came into the to the fore really didn't it you know we saw Ocon nearly pick up a second podium. We saw him win a race. We saw Alonso pick up a podium as well. Like that Alpine showed that it under the right, like under the right conditions and within the right structures could be really, really quick. And if that quick car had a driver in it that was a little bit more tenacious in Daniel Ricciardo and a little bit more confident in Daniel Ricciardo as well, we could have seen a little bit more from it. But I, I appreciate that. I guess the step between Alpine and McLaren is that little bit more than than people expect, I guess. I think, you know, the difference in the cars, even though it looks like tenths of a second in terms of qualifying, that's a huge jump when it comes to Formula One. I kind of feel like with uh, with Ricardo doing this and moving a year early, this just means maybe then he'll be able to push the momentum through if he even has any from 2021. But yeah, maybe he'll do a bit better with the momentum he's gathered in 2021. Yeah, he's not really carrying much momentum through to 2022, is he? It was, it was a tough year for Daniel Ricciardo in 2021. <laughs> What do you think was the main thing that really went wrong for him? Well, I think there's two factors. I think mainly, maybe maybe it's his ego. Maybe he feels that he he wanted to establish his dominance at McLaren, obviously. And then he's been beaten by like a 21-year-old, 22-year-old. Maybe that kind of hurt his ego and he kind of tailed off. But I think also maybe, I think he's, was it Red Bull, he's always, he's riding the brakes and stuff. Whereas McLaren is a very different car. Yeah, it didn't suit him at all, did it? Like you could see him really struggling to get into those corners and... Every time he tried to break that little bit later, it just completely went wrong for him. And I think you're right. I think he did lose that little bit of confidence in the car, especially, and then tried to sort of second guess his own driving ability. He definitely didn't look comfortable in the car. 
Um, what would you say his best performance, obviously, outside Monza was in the season? Well, I think a lot of his performances went under the radar, obviously. Like, for example, like Spa, the game was like, qualified fourth, and that was all overshadowed by Lando's crash. I think Spa's performance, considering it was all raining amazingly, and I think was it Sochi came fifth or something, and again, all overshadowed by Lando. So, yeah, I think it's either like Sochi or like Spa, he did pretty well. Yeah, he did do pretty well at, at places, and obviously, Monza is the one that stands out to everybody. And I don't know. Like, personally, I think that Monza, him winning in a roundabout way, kind of cost him more points as the season progressed. I think there was a lot of hype around him after Monza that, you know, he finally clicked back into gear. And then those next couple of races, it didn't quite come together again. And a lot of criticism came out again about him. Yeah, I feel that maybe maybe in the future, after after this, this downfall from him in, in 2021, uh, he'll be able to maybe build back up because obviously, like you said, all the pressure was put on him. But I think that's just 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 life in this case because obviously with Lando after the after Sochi and everything, all the expectation was put on. Uh, and McLaren is at the top again. They've had a win and maybe another back to back win at Sochi. I just think in the future he's got to just have to deal with it, and he's just going to have to you know live life uh, with all that pressure on him. Yeah, it does seem strange that one of you know the most experienced drivers that we've got on the grid now in Daniel Ricciardo, he really, really did struggle in that 2021 McLaren car. And even though he got that win in Monza, as you said, there was then those races towards the end of the season where it just completely spiralled and missing out on third place in the Constructors' Championship to Ferrari. How much of an impact do you think that will have on McLaren moving forward? Well, I think I think maybe a big thing that a lot of people haven't taken in consideration is that uh, McLaren with Renault before they moved to Mercedes, obviously, with their engine. So maybe they're like their chassis, for example, was designed for that Renault engine. So maybe in 2022, they're going to have a, now a Mercedes designed or not. Or may, it's made for the engine. So maybe then they could improve um, and maybe they kind of threw away the end of the season to focus on 2022 instead of the fight for third in 2021 against Ferrari. I mean, it definitely does make sense. I feel like a lot of teams sort of threw away a few points yeah, yeah. here and there over the course of the season for focusing on 2022. And it's it's obviously a massive opportunity for so many teams up and down the grid. I'd love to get your thoughts, though, on Daniel Ricciardo moving into 2022, especially considering in interviews recently, he's been talking about Formula One and his form and especially the World Drivers' Championship. And actually, he said that the Formula One Championship to him feels like just a trophy and that he's not massively fixated on winning it. Do you think that kind of mentality might cost him in the future as we move forward into 2022? Well, I think that, that I've heard in from everywhere online that uh, a champion isn't really always happy. Like, look at Lando. I think he's kind of beating himself up after Sochi and all his bad performances, whereas Daniel's always oh, just a, just another loss. Oh, well. And I think that maybe, maybe although his win in his, I would say 2021 was probably his toughest year ever, and I think if he can win in his toughest year ever, I think he'll be fine for 2022. But I think he might just need to change mentally a tiny bit and be a bit more harder on himself, you know. So what do you think is sort of his ability slash McLaren's opportunity in 2022 going to look like? Do you think he'll be able to actually drag that car up the grid a little more? Do you think he'll be able to beat Lando Norris? Or where do you sort of see him fitting in at McLaren and also in in the sort of driver's championship? Well, I think he'll definitely improve a lot because he's had this one year to maybe just get re used to the car. So I think he'll definitely improve. Maybe maybe not as much as Lando. Maybe he'll be probably same level as Lando, but I really don't think he'll, he'll overtake Lando in the standings. I think he'll just kind of stay either with him, like the Ferraris have, where they've been neck and neck the entire time season, or he'll be just below him in the standings. Okay. Whereabouts, where do you see McLaren being in the sort of constructors? Are they going to be up there, do you reckon? Yeah, I think Ferrari's definitely going to dominate the new regulation. So I definitely think they're going to be above McLaren. But I think they're probably, I think that I see them in three or four, the same place they've kind of been. Because I think the likes of Mercedes and Red Bull and Ferrari have put so much money into this regulation. So I know, yes, Red Bull have put a lot of investment in 2021. But still, they have millions to spend on it. Whereas McLaren, yes, they have a lot but they haven't been putting as much in, in my opinion. That is fair. They haven't had the same infrastructure, I guess, as a team like yeah. Ferrari. And I think Ferrari being that synonymous team with Formula One, I think most people have just sort of jumped on the bandwagon, the fact that Ferrari will be back as soon as the regulations change. And the, the same sort of thing happened, to be fair, when we changed the regulations and Mercedes became that dominant team. Yeah. A lot of people thought that was the time that Ferrari were going to step up. So 
I'm still a bit 50-50 personally on whether Ferrari will actually, you know, take that step up forwards. I think it's going to be a little bit closer than we think. Talking about sort of Daniel Ricciardo though, obviously he moved to McLaren from Alpine. It is now technically, I guess, uh, was the Red Bull team when he was there and Red Bull. The fact that Max Verstappen has now won a championship in that Red Bull car, how much do you think that hurt Daniel Ricciardo? He made a decision in 2019 and I think he kind of, he's stuck with it now. So obviously he can't, I don't think he'll go back to Red Bull. But I think with his choice between Renault and McLaren in was it 2019 or 2018 when he was going to choose, I think if he'd gone with uh, McLaren in 2019, I, can't, I think he could be, like when 2020, when Ferrari had their dip in performance, I see him, he could have come fourth or maybe even third if he'd really pushed hard in that uh, in that McLaren. As Lando was still an inexperienced driver in 2020, obviously. So I think maybe if he'd, you know, gone to McLaren a couple years earlier instead of going to Renault or Alpine as it is now, I think he could really have been up there. But I don't think he'll ever win a championship. I really think he'll be <clears throat> like Felipe Massa, in my opinion. He'll kind of just be be good enough to score wins and points and podiums, but he'll never be, I don't think he'll ever be a champion. Okay. So you don't think that, do you, so from that then, do you think that Monza might be the final win we see for Daniel Ricciardo in Formula One? Now that's the tricky one. It, it, I think it all depends on how McLaren do these new regulations. If they succeed and they do well, I think we could see him scoring a couple more wins over the next few years. But again, if they, if they fail massively with these new regulations, I think this could be the last time we see Daniel Ricciardo on the top step of the podium. And do you think he's got one more move in him or do you think McLaren will be the end of him if he doesn't get it right and McLaren decide to move on to another driver can you see another team picking him up after this real dip in form if he has another bad year in a McLaren car? Well, I think all drivers have bad years. I mean, look, it was at Sebastian Vettel in 2014 when he was actually beaten by Ricardo. I think that like Ferrari took him after that and then now uh, Aston Martin. So I really think that even even though he's had a bad year or even if it's two bad years, he's still a race winner, which a lot of teams will put, put, will put up at the top of their list compared to a, maybe a rookie. Where do you think he'll end up then? Say he has a poor year at McLaren. Say his 2022 doesn't go quite how he'd wanted to. We know that he's you know, not scared of changing team at this point. He's been around in three or four on the grid. Where could you see him move after McLaren to try and get that little bit of form back if it doesn't go well for him in 2022? I think he might take a sort of same route as Bottas as going from one of the higher ranking teams to maybe a lower team. So I think Maybe, maybe he could go to like a Williams if they really need the re, need, really need the talent, or maybe like an Aston Martin if Vettel does retire, which I think would be a good good fit for him. Ooh, okay. See, I personally, and this might be a, a bit of a bold shout for me. I know that he has the connections with the USA. Obviously, massively loves the US Grand Prix. I kind of can see him move into like a Haas if they maybe become more of a midfield team over the next couple of seasons, maybe replacing a Mick Schumacher when he moves on, or even a Nikita Mazepin if they you know, don't need that money anymore and need a different driver to come into the team. What do you think about that? Do you think he'd move to somewhere like a Haas? I think if, I think, I, I don't think he'd set a standard so low that he'd move to like a, the bottom team. I think I'm, I'm, I'm saying Williams banking on that they'll become like a midfield team. Again, if Haas nail these regulations and they get to a midfield team, I think he's more likely to go there if, it, if it's a midfield team rather than a, a back marker. Do you think if Lando Norris performs to the level we expect from him, that will also sort of signal the end for Daniel Ricciardo? I do think that if he does get beaten by Lando, yes, he's new and everything, but he's been he's such a great driver that I think two great drivers of Lando and Daniel coming together and then him being beaten by Lando would would not look good, good for him if, if it's over two years. Yeah, that's very true. Like, I, I think you can get away with one year in Formula One. You can kind of like blame the fact that you're in a new car, blame the fact that you're getting used to the new team. I think as soon as it's two or three years, especially with how competitive Formula One is for seats, you can't get away with being bad for two years in a row. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I guess he kind of... Uh delaying the inevitable when it when he left Red Bull, because I think the same sort of thing could have happened uh, with Max Verstappen. And that's kind of happening now with uh, McLaren. So maybe kind of seeing what would have happened at Red Bull if Max, uh, if, if Daniel had stayed at Red Bull. Okay, then moving back towards 2022. 
And I know it's basically impossible to guess, but if I had to, you know, put you on the spot from one to 20, where do you think Daniel Ricciardo will finish? All right. So I've put quite a bit of thought into this. Uh, I, you know, everyone's trying to guess where, where everyone's going to finish, but I have a feeling he's going to do well, but I really don't think he's going to do as well as people expect him to. He's not going to be finishing in the top five. I don't think I'm going to say probably about six or seven. There we have it then, Daniel Ricciardo in 6th or 7th place in the Drivers' Championship into the 2022 season. What do you think about that? Let me know where you think Daniel Ricciardo will come in 2022 in the comments down below. Whilst you're there, why not check out Cars with Connor's channel? He is making some incredible Formula 1 stuff over there. Incredibly good content. Has only been around a couple of months. Definitely go over and show him some support. Whilst you're there as well, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.